Hello, and welcome to this video showing how to solve a simple finite element analysis using simulation apps available on the 3D Experience platform. The study I'll be looking at here is tutorial number one in the Technia Simulation Tutorial series, which was originally developed by Lawrence Marx. The process begins by accessing the component geometry to be simulated. In this case I'm importing the geometry from a file, but in many cases this might be done by accessing from a shared database within the 3D Experience platform. It is also possible to access non-native geometry in a variety of CAD neutral formats, although this limits the number of features available for editing in the feature tree. Once the geometry has imported it is displayed on the turntable viewer so that it can be visualized. This looks like the part I'm interested in, so I'll open the context menu by right-clicking and open the part. I can now navigate the part to check that it is correct. Because the import was from a native 3D experience file, the feature tree is fully populated. We can also see that the designer has specified a material for the component. To use this material in a simulation it must have a simulation domain, which we can check by expanding the material feature tree. We can see that this material does have a simulation domain and is therefore suitable for use in a simulation. The part is now ready for use in a finite element analysis. To create the finite element model I start by clicking the compass in the top left of the screen. I like to use the favorite apps section to access the apps I use most. For this model I'm using structural model creation. When prompted, I select a standard method of initialization. This means some of the mesh parameters will be set automatically by the app. Since the model only has one part, I use the all geometries option to initialize the mesh. A tetrahedral mesh is suitable for this analysis, and I'll accept the suggested element size. When I click OK, the green glyph appears, to show that the part mesh has been initialized. The feature tree now has nodes and elements and properties objects. Clicking the update button triggers the mesh to be generated. In this case the mesh looks a bit fine, so I double click the mesh object in the feature tree to edit it. The system determined size looks a bit coarse, so I'll settle with specifying 2.75mm, which looks ok. The system has used the material specified for the part to create and assign a section automatically. The finite element model is now complete. In the previous video, we looked at creating a finite element model of a simple bracket. In this video I'll show how to complete the analysis definition by creating a scenario. On the 3D Experience platform, a scenario is used to define features such as loads and boundary conditions that will control the response of the model during the analysis. I'll start by clicking on the compass and choosing the Mechanical Scenario Creation app from the My Favorite section. In the Initialization dialog box, it's good practice to add meaningful names for the simulation and analysis case. The Analysis Type and Finite Element Model are selected from the drop-down lists. Next, I'll create a Static Analysis step by choosing from the Procedures toolbar. The step options will look familiar to Abacus users. For this analysis, all of the default settings are appropriate, so I can just OK the dialog box without making any edits. Picking geometry for loads and boundary conditions is easier if the mesh is hidden. Right-click on a blank area of the screen and use the Visibility Manager to hide the mesh. Next, switch to the Boundary Conditions tools and add a clamp to the two bolt holes. This will fully fix the selected regions in all degrees of freedom. Now, I'll switch to the loads toolbar and add a bearing load to the top hole to simulate a mass of 100 kilograms being supported. There are several tools that can be used to orientate the load correctly. The magnitude is added with units. Notice how it is automatically converted to default units on exiting the field. A visual indication of the load is shown on the geometry, and the dialog can be closed. Finally, I'll modify the output request to remove data that aren't required for this analysis. It's a good idea to add the nodal forces variable, nfork, to enable the use of sensors in post-processing. We'll look at that in a bit more detail in the next video in this series.
After refreshing, the model is ready for simulation. There are several options for job submission, including running remotely on the cloud. As this is only a small model it's easier to run locally. Note that the licenses are embedded and no additional solver tokens are required. The analysis completes successfully. Thanks for watching this video, in the next part I'll take a look at post-processing. Hello, and welcome to this video. Previously, we've looked at creating and solving a finite element model of a simple bracket. In this video we'll look at some of the post-processing tools available in the 3D Experience platform. Once the simulation has completed, it's a good idea to check the diagnostic files. These will certainly be familiar to Abacus users. Everything looks okay, so I'll close the window and click the results icon to switch to the post-processing app. We can see that the software has created a number of default field plots and sensors automatically. These can be viewed by expanding the containers in the tree. Double-clicking will allow editing. The legend can be edited by using the context menu to change various parameters, for example changing to discrete color intervals. The plots window can be used to change the displayed step, field variable and frame. Clicking on the geometry opens a context menu with several useful options, for example plot sectioning. The robot can be used to configure the section. Editing the plot options allows the deformation to be scaled. This can be really useful for stiff components as it allows the deformed mode shape to be visualized more easily. In the third tab the visible edges options can be changed to allow the mesh to be viewed or to modify the feature edge angle parameter. It's good practice to validate the model by checking that the applied loads are in equilibrium with reaction forces due to boundary conditions. I'll do this by creating resultant sensors for these variables. First, select resultant sensor from the toolbar. Then select boundary condition as the support and pick the clamp. I'll repeat the process for the load and compare the two values. If I hover over the glyphs, we can see that the forces are equal in magnitude and in opposite directions. It's also useful to check the energy history for the analysis. To do this I'll create a history plot. From the plot toolbar select XY plot from history. First, I'll select the quantity for total strain energy. Next. I'll create another history plot for external work. In a static analysis this should be equal to the strain energy. The two history objects appear in the feature tree and can be edited by double clicking. Hovering over the curves in the legend shows that both quantities are equal, confirming that the energy balance is correct. There are many other features available in post-processing, so it's worth investigating the different toolsets. Thanks for watching this video, we'll be producing more videos covering the Technia tutorial series in the coming months, so please look out for more content if you found this helpful. Or, you can contact us via the form at www.technia.co.uk.